Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath to all. I would like to welcome everyone to our live stream divine service program. Uh, this morning, it's a special uh, Sabbath in the sense that this is our first live stream broadcast for our divine service coming here from uh, Vancouver, Filipino SD Church. And I would like to make some announcement, though you know this very well, but uh, I would like to remind you on how to prevent the COVID-19 or the coronavirus. COVID-19 is all, also known as coronavirus has been spreading around the world, and it is declared by WHO as a pandemic. Symptoms are coughing, fever, difficulty in breathing. Below are some of the steps that you can take to protect yourself and those people around you. Number one, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Avoid touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth, especially with your unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Cover your mouth and your nose when with your arms or tissue when sneezing and coughing. Immediately throw tissues in the covered trash can and wash your hands right away. Avoid large social gatherings. Maintain a social distance of at least six feet or two meters. Avoid shaking hands or other close contact greetings. Wash and disinfect Frequently use items such as toys, electronics, and doorknobs. If you are sick, stay home to avoid the spreading of the illness to others. This is given to us by the Health Canada, World Health Organization, CDC, and ADRA. So I would like to remind everyone to take note of this precautionary measure. This morning I would like to give it to you our program. We're going to play two songs from the YouTube, a hymnal, a hymns, and we, ha we will have the opening song as the, the hymn Day by Day. I will be giving the Garden of Prayer, then after that, Pastor will give his sermon titled The Promise. Then we're going to have our closing song when the when we all got to heaven then the speaker will close with a prayer then that's and our live stream programming so welcome everyone in behalf of the audio video uh, team who are working so hard to make this uh, live stream possible i would like to thank joey de leon brother alex and aj dancel thank you very much for your uh, great help so we're gonna proceed now to our two uh, songs as part of our praise songs coming from YouTube that will be played to us by our audio video team.
uh, today we will have our opening song and the title of our opening song will be Day by Day. together. Today is the time for our garden of prayer, and I would like to invite everyone, if you can kneel down in your homes, please do so. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you. We praise your holy name. We worship you, O Lord, in spirit and in truth. Thank you for the life, for the strength, and for the freedom to worship you wherever we are. Today, O Lord, we lift up to you our speaker, Pastor Yomar Makarig, as he shared to us your word this morning. Bless the viewers who are watching in their homes. On these uncertain times, we claim the heads of promise of protection you have given to us, O oh Lord. We believe that you are our protector. You are a shield from any virus and any diseases. You are our provider. 
our peace in this time of worry of an unprecedented event. You are our hope in this hopeless world, O oh Lord. We thank you for the birthday celebrations of the brethren, for the wedding and baptismal anniversaries. We are so great that we have this opportunity. I pray also, O oh Lord, for those who have unspoken requests. I pray for those who are sick, heal them, O oh Lord, whether it is physical sickness or spiritual sickness. We give you all the glory and honor. We believe it and accept it through our Lord and Jesus, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our speaker this morning is no other than our senior pastor, Pastor Yomar Makaraig. The title of his uh, sermon is The Promise. So let's, let's uh, give our undivided attention as we listen to the word of the Lord this morning. Pastor, it's your turn. Thank you, Elder Dan. If you're wondering today who is with me in, in this church, so I have Elder Don and uh, Brother Joey and uh, Brother EJ and Brother Alex and uh, we have also our treasurer here, <laughs> Brother uh, Roger Magsalin. Uh, thank you folks for uh, attending here in our church. Don't worry, we are following... Uh, Restrictions, okay? <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. <clears throat> I'd like to greet uh, our brethren in uh, Abundant Life, Seventh-day Adventist Church. I know you are uh, watching right now. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this live stream uh, video. And also the uh, Vancouver uh, prayer group, uh, I know that they are watching uh, right now. May God bless you all, and I hope and pray that uh, we will receive a blessing from uh, God today as we uh, listen to his word uh, once again. Let me read something here about uh, lockdown, okay? Uh, this is actually an acronym. L stands for uh, listen to God's voice and reflect. O, obey his word and his teachings. C, call on Jesus' name and be, and be calm. K, know what is the purpose of all of this. D, Dwell in his presence. Do not panic. O, offer a prayer for everyone's safety. W, wait and be patient. This too shall, what? Pass. N, nurture our personal relationship with him. And this is the simple meaning of lockdown. And I do believe that uh, many of our believers are doing this as they stayed in their respective homes. They have this uh, nurturing uh, process right now. It's been a, how many weeks now? Two weeks, right? And we praise God uh, for this uh, opportunity. Let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Our Heavenly Father, again, we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to send the Holy Spirit in our midst so that we can uh, fully understand your message and appreciate the promise that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ mentioned in his word. Be with us, O Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me repeat this again that uh, I think six months ago or four months ago, I share with our church board that, that I'm going to share 
and preach about the 28 fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I've been doing that now, and uh, this is the continuation of that presentation. Uh, I think last uh, two Sabbaths ago, uh, the last sermon I preached here was about why we are called Sabbatista, <laughs> or why do we keep the Sabbath, right? And we found out in the Bible that the disciples of Jesus Christ, his followers, uh, in the New Testament kept the Sabbath. Beginning from the Old Testament up to the New Testament, and even in the new heavens, in the new earth. Okay, Isaiah saw a vision. Those people of God will worship him, worship him from Sabbath to Sabbath. So we have a very good uh, foundation in the Word of God why we keep the Sabbath until now. This is based, again, on the commands of God. And the last time I preached about that is uh, about the change of the Sabbath, right? Part of that sermon is about change of the Sabbath. Why we have Sabbath here uh, today and we're still Sunday in our uh, planet Earth. Uh, people keep Sunday as holy day. But when we go back to the Bible, it is actually the Sabbath. So this is the continuation, and this is more focused on why do we call ourselves Adventists, right? So seventh day is done, so we're going to uh, Adventist theme. And we all know Adventist means, or Adventists, a group of people who are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are still looking forward, and even the Bible mentioned this as the blessed hope, okay? The appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can check that in Titus 2, uh, verse 13. So the title for this morning is about the promise. This is the promise of Jesus Christ, mentioned in the book of the New Testament, particularly in the book of John when Jesus Christ said to his uh, disciples in John 14, 1 and 2, Let not your heart be troubled. All of you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So the purpose of Jesus Christ going back to the Father, is to prepare a place for us. In that uh, version, it says, in my Father's house are many mansions. You know, there's one guy who asked me, which is bigger, the house or the mansion? <laughs> but in other translation, it says, in my Father's house are many rooms. All right? If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So the, the going back of Jesus Christ to the Father is to prepare a place for us. Okay. Verse 3. It says there, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there all of you may be also. Uh, sorry, this one is not uh, working. Is this working? Yep. Okay, there you go. So in verse 3, I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there all of you may be also. So, Jesus Christ wanted his disciples and his followers to be with him, right? And he said, you know what? I am coming back again. John 14, and that is a very... Uh, 
famous passage in the book of John. He said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And this promise of Jesus Christ we also mentioned in the book of Acts. Let's see in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 10. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. And we all know these two men dressed in white linen were angels according to the story. Okay, so we have this testimony of two angels and the disciples. So if we're going to read verse 11, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way as you have seen him go into heaven. So this is not only the promise of Jesus Christ in John 1, 2, and 3, 14, 1, 2, and 3, but also even the angels mentioned this in the book of Acts chapter 1. They also believe that Jesus Christ someday will come back again when they said, the same Jesus whom who has been taken from you into heaven will come back into the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So it was tested by Jesus Christ and then by the angels. And then when we go to Philippians 3, uh, even Paul says, our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. I compel Myself is compelled by this understanding that the disciples of Jesus Christ, even Paul himself, they were all Adventists because they are looking forward and waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's why I said uh, before, they were also kept the Sabbath but today we call ourselves Seventh-day Adventists. We are the people who keep the Sabbath commandments and waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ just like them. That's why we are called ourselves Seventh-day Adventists. In here, Paul says, my brother, my sisters, you know what? Our citizenship is in heaven, not here in Canada. Uh, especially in uh, beautiful Colombia, BC or British Columbia, but our citizenship is in heaven. Titus 2.13, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The letter of Paul to uh, Titus, oh, Titus, the book of Titus mentioned this coming of Jesus Christ as the blessed hope. Okay? This is our blessed hope today. And we as an Adventist, we are looking forward to that blessed hope. Why blessed hope? Because we are going to see our dead ones, loved ones, back to life again. In that blessed resurrection morning. We will see Jesus Christ. And we will be with him forever. That's why it is called blessed hope. Okay. And we are still looking for this to happen. I hope in our time Jesus Christ will come back again. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 16. We did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So Peter, all right, when he was with Jesus Christ 
on the Mount of Transfiguration, he saw the glory of Jesus Christ. And he said here, now in his letter, we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning, he was simply saying, our message about the coming back again of Jesus Christ is not man-made stories. It is not made in banana plantation. It is not made in guava plantation. In our language, we call that uh, parang kwento sa bayabasan. <laughs> this is not a man-made story. He said, we were eyewitnesses of these things, of His Majesty. You look at, uh, let me go back again. That is Second Peter chapter 1.16. Look at the broader context here why he said these things. In, in chapter 2, but there will be false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. So he was simply saying, if you're going to read uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, or chapter 1 and chapter 2, uh, the reason why he said these things is that there were some false teachers. And he's saying, when we told you about the coming of Jesus Christ, we are telling you the truth. But, sad to say, there were also false prophets among people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord. So, uh, truth versus lies. Second Peter chapter 2, uh, 2 to 3. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into this disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. There you go. Uh, they were eyewitnesses of His Majesty about the coming of Jesus Christ. But these people, they made their own stories. And the new international version says, fabricated stories. Meaning it is not true. It is not real. Okay? When you jump to chapter 3, you would see that part of this, okay, are those people who scoff about the coming of Jesus Christ. Second Peter mentioned that as scoffers in the last days. So two groups of people. First, the group of Apostle Peter. They were eyewitnesses of his majesty about his coming. They were eyewitnesses of that. The second group is these false uh, teachers who made their fabricated stories. Chapter 3 mentioned about those scoffers in the last days. 2 Timothy 4, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a, gather a great number of teachers to say what their teaching ears want to hear. You know, when, we, when you preach and share about the second coming of Christ, people are afraid. Oh, we don't want to hear that. For them, the second coming of Jesus Christ is not glorious. It is not blessed hope. But for us, it is our blessed hope. Right? When we discuss about the signs of the times, for us, we are nearing to that blessed hope. When we share about the end of the world, for us, that is blessed hope. For them, it is not blessed hope. But our citizenship is in heaven, not here. That's why we are always looking forward to that blessed hope. That's why uh, it says here, uh, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine instead to suit their own desires. That's why uh, Paul, okay, in his uh, letter to uh, Timothy, preached the word in season and out of season. 
because of these things, they will not listen to sound doctrine anymore, but preach the word. Meaning, even if it is not seasoned to do that, do it. Because that is the sound doctrine. Right? They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to meats. So these things, I should say, there are many uh, thoughts and thinkings about the second coming of Christ. Some people say, oh, Jesus Christ is actually here. But we cannot see him. He came here before in his spirit. Some people say, oh, the second coming of Christ is like uh, when you die, that is the second coming of Christ. Some people say, the second coming of Christ is already here. He is in your heart. Sad to say, they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to meat. So, let's continue in here. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come. This is the one I'm talking about. Scoffing and following their own evil desires. Where is the promise of his coming? These people are, you know, telling this thing. Where is the promise? Where is this coming he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. When you read carefully this passage, they were simply saying, it is not true. There is no second coming. The second part is in Matthew 24, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Are we seeing this in our society today? Yes. But last Friday night, I share with you, if you see these things, lift up your hands because your redemption draw it nigh. Meaning your redemption is near when you see all these things. Mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Now, if you want to sustain yourself of the things that you want in this world, what is the first source of these things? Money. Right? If you want the things of this world, you have to sustain it with money. That's why lovers of money. If you have money, you become what? Boastful. Oh, you know what? I have these things. Oh. <laughs> As if you own everything. Proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Now, let me put some logic here. Some teenagers today, right, if they earn their own money as if they don't need their parents. Oh, I can live on my own. I can do whatever I want. I can buy my own things. I can do whatever I want. I can buy whatever I want. Ungrateful. Unholy. Why unholy? Because everything can be answered by money. If I'm sick, I go to the hospital. I don't need God. I don't need prayer. There is no miracle because if you want to see miracle, if you have money, miracle is easy. Right? Some people say those things. But for the people of God, we don't do that. Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than, rather than lovers of God. So for those people, especially teenagers, young people, young parents, and even middle-aged people, 
If you see these things in yourself today, kneel down and pray and ask God for forgiveness. Ask God for the change of heart, and He will give it to you. Because this, according to this passage, one of the signs in or of the last days. One of the signs. That's why when you look around, when you look around and walk around in our society today, as if people don't need God. The first thing that you would have heard or hear from them is, oh, I don't like religion. That is first. They use the word religion to make a wall, a separation, okay, between relationship with God and they use religion. And they would say, I don't like religion, but I believe in God. Many people who claim that they believe in God, it is very clear in the words of Jesus Christ, many will say to me on that day, what? Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in your name. Lord, Lord, we believe in your name. Lord, Lord, we also do good things. These people who claim to have a belief in God. But sad to say, Jesus Christ will tell them, you know what? I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice iniquities. Yes, they believe in God, but they were not driven by God or motivated by God. So let's continue in here. Having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with such people. And this is very, very dangerous. You know, outside is holy, but if no one looks around, no one's around him, he behaves differently. <laughs> right? Having a form of godliness but denying its power than having have nothing to do with such people. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. Two, uh, group of groups of people here, those who love the world and those who love the Father. If you love the Father, you will not love the world. If you love the world, you will not love the Father. There's no middle ground. Either you love the world or love the Father. Or love the Father, hate the world. Love the world or you hate the Father. Because the Paul says, our citizenship is in heaven. You're going to ask me, oh, what do you mean, Pastor? We, we don't need to, you mean, <clears throat> we don't need to have these uh, important things in this world? You mean, it is not necessary for now to buy these things? Uh, you know the answer, right? You acquire what you need in this world. But please do not love the world just like some other people. You can read Revela Revelation, Romans chapter 1, and you would see there. They even praise those people who practice such things. And you, you would see this in, in Hollywood uh, stars. They applauded those people who practice the same things. Right? But our glory is not on those, on those things. Our glory is in the word of God. 1 John 2, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. I think 
this is uh, very easy for us to understand. Why do we need not to love the world? Because the world and its desires passed away. Meaning it is temporary. But those who does the will of God lives forever. That is eternal. So you have a choice. I have a choice to make. Temporary or eternal. If I want eternal things, then I have to follow God's will for me. If I focus on not eternal things, then my focus uh, is on the world. Primarily those three things. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those three things. If I focus on those things, in this passage, we, we know that this is temporary. If I die, if you die, and that's it. But if you do the will, if you do the will, if you follow the will of God, you will live forever. So, those who want to get rich fall into temptation, right? And a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. You look at the word here, those who want to get rich. Do you need to get rich? I don't think so. As long as you have everything that you need, in this life, and you know that you have relationship with God, and you know that you have eternal life with you, that is your riches. It's not only material things, okay? But those people who want to get rich fall into temptation, in a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. I came from the Philippines, and we all know the mechanics there in the Philippines, right? You suddenly, after a year, you're a millionaire, and you can buy your own things. A lot of things. There are only two options. Number one, either you're a politician. Second, or you're a drug lord. That's it. <laughs> Maybe there's their option. If you win lotto. Right? But that, that is one in a million times. Right? So, that's why those people who want to get rich, they fall into uh, many uh, temptations according to <clears throat> the word of God. So, let's continue. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. This is true. I have seen and known lots of people, okay? They pursue money. And what happened? There you go. They have wandered from the faith. They don't want to go to church because they were driven by money. Even no work on Saturday, they will find work on Saturday because they were driven by money. And that's why this is really true. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many grips. And this is also real. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What is the answer? What can you give in exchange for your soul? You don't own your life. It is given to you by God. So what can you give in exchange for your own soul? Nothing. But God said, you know what? I want you to be ready when I come. Jesus Christ said, I want you to be ready when I appear in the clouds of heaven. 
You can exchange your life full of sin to me. And I will give you a new life. That's the only exchange that you can give to God. But the people would say, no, I'll just keep on looking for money until I die. I don't need that. But Jesus Christ said, no. Even if you gain the whole world and loses your soul, everything will be nothing. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. So, if God will destroy by fire everything on this planet earth, Okay? Including your possession, including your homes, including your cars, everything. What only remains is your relationship with God. That will remain. That's why this is very important. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with the roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. So what is the importance of this topic? God is trying to tell you that if you invest on eternal things, do His will, you will live forever through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. If you dwell on temporary things, you will lose everything. Including your life. That's why he said. Well the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear. With a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. I don't know if you have seen a man. Who is uh, fighting for his life. You know. He'll do everything just to inhale a little bit of air. <laughs> just to extend his life. I have seen many people like this in the hospital. And I'm just wondering during that time, what is the most important thing in life, really? When you breath your last, when you give your last breath, what is the most important thing? To be sure of eternal life. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. That's why we are called Adventists. While we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ, Apostle Peter encouraged or encourages us to live holy and godly lives. Some people would say, ah, you know, Seventh-day Adventist, boring. They, they, these people are boring. They don't smoke. They don't drink. They don't dance. They don't go to that place. You know, there are so many don't, don't, don't. But they really don't understand. We're just following the command of God, reading the Bible. Because everything will be destroyed in this way. What kind of people ought you to be? And the answer is there. You ought to live holy and godly lives before we are investing for eternity. And I do believe that this is a really good investment. You will not lose it. As you look forward, see? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and the speed it's coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. 
And the Bible mentioned that our God is a jealous God and a consuming fire. And who can stand? Does only purify. Holy. And have godly lives. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Can you imagine this statement of Peter in 2 Peter chapter 3? He is still looking forward to that new heavens and new earth. And as Adventists, we are still looking forward to that. But while we are still looking forward, we are living holy in godly lives and doing His will. Because someday when He appears, then we will go with Him in the clouds of heaven and be with Him forever. Right? And we will come back again here on this earth renewed together with the angels according to the book of Revelation. So then, dear friends, so then, my dear brothers and sisters, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. How, how can we do that? If we, have, if we maintain our unbroken connection with God, then that is possible. If we always trust him, that is always possible. And that's why this is very important. So when we claim ourselves, you know what? I am a Seventh-day Adventist. We're telling two major teachings of the Bible. While we wait for the second coming of God, we keep the commandments of God, not only the Ten Commandments, but also the rest of the commandments of God. And while we're waiting for the second coming of God, the Bible told us that we need to live holy, godly, spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. And we know that this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. This body is the temple of God. And that's why we don't do that. Because we are investing for eternity. We are just following the word of God. And we are just looking forward to his appearing. And we call that appearing our blessed hope. If you want to give solid hope to other people, then you can share this one. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Now, this passage, when the grace of God appeared, we accepted that grace, right? We put our trust in our Savior. And then, this salvation, this grace, teaches us to say, N-O, no, to what? Ungodliness and worldly passions. Because if we still live like worldly people, and love the world. The love of the Father is not with us. Okay? That's why it is very important for us to understand this passage. The grace, the salvation of God appeared, and it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Even though some people or some members are bullying you. Always making uh, negative comments on you. Always negative. There's no positive. Every time you see them, always negative. Don't bother. Leave with this controlled and upright spirit. Self-controlled self. I will not say anything negative. I will always tell and say positive things about people. Because you know yourself. Look at yourself. If you don't want to, you know, accept and heard negative uh, comments in you, even though it is not true. Okay? If you don't want that, you will not do that to other people. 
because you know the feeling. So let us follow this one. It teaches us not to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. That is a total package from verse 11 up to verse 13. You need to live holy, godly, self-controlled while we wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's why we are called, we call ourselves Adventists. I want to emphasize this one. We called ourselves Seventh-day Adventists because we are different. We are peculiar. We are unique. We are the remnant if people claim that they are Christian, praise the Lord. But we are different. We see different things in the Bible. We are urged by the word of God to live holy and godly lives in this present age. So don't be sad if you cannot drink alcohol. That is fine. Save your money for something. Don't be sad if you cannot smoke. That is fine. Save your money for something. Because we need to live a holy and godly life in this present age. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. I am God's property. Since I am God's property, my lifestyle must be accordance to his will and according to his will. It is, based on, it is not based on worldly standards. It is not based on worldly things, but it's based on heavenly standards and godly standards. Again, I want to emphasize when you say and you claim, I am a Seventh-day Adventist, you understand well the message of the Bible. Okay? Beware. Because sometimes, according to Paul, knowledge brags, but love edifies. Don't use this uh, knowledge and understanding to put down people. Base everything on the ministry of Jesus Christ. Right? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Each person, not by family, <laughs> not by social group, right? But each person. Not by streets, not by church, but each person according to what they have done. I want you to understand these things. Don't think that, oh, you know what, my uncle is a pastor or a priest or a minister. Uh, because, of he, because of that, uh, I think uh, he can bring me to heaven. Don't think about that way, right? But according to the Bible, he will reward each person according to what they have done. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. He is coming very soon. How soon is soon? The answer is very soon. <laughs> I think that's the answer there. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. If you're going to uh, read uh, Revelation, the last chapter there, Come Lord Jesus, 
Christ. We are waiting for that event uh, to happen in our, in our own day. But God has His own time. And I do believe that this soon will be very soon. He who testifies to this thing says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. So you see these pictures. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. This picture, this is only a picture, the background. If you see these things, imagine yourself, you are one of them. And you will see angels and Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. Together with your family, together with your clan. And you are ready to welcome Jesus Christ and be with him forever. All worldly things will come to an end. All worldly problems will come to an end. All your stresses will come to an end. Everything will become new. That's why the Bible called this, the promise of his coming, our blessed hope. If there will be a group of people in this world that is full of hope, that is none other than the Seventh-day Adventist. Because God has given us this full understanding of what is to come and what should we do while we waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. I hope and I pray that my family, my wife, my kids, and my relatives are ready. I hope your family, your wife, your husband, your kids will be also ready on that day. If you have family members who are not active in the church, God will do his own things to gather them again together in the family of believers. Maybe God will use some other means. God will use some other people. Right? You don't know. But let us look forward to this promise of Jesus Christ that he is coming back again. Are you excited on these things. I'm really excited. You know what? I can picture in my mind uh, what will happen uh, to that day. Many people are screaming and crying, you know, and really don't know what to do. But for those people who are ready, you know, they are, you know, looking intently into the small clouds. And they know that is one of the signs that Jesus Christ is coming very soon. Until we have this, lo and behold, the angels and Jesus Christ suddenly appear in the clouds of heaven. And those who died in the Lord will receive again the resurrection of their bodies. And together with them, we will be with the clouds to be with the Lord forever. He who testifies to this thing says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you so much because you have given us this understanding through your word that we can call this coming of our Savior Jesus Christ in the clouds of heaven as our blessed hope. And we fully understand these teachings in your word. We were captivated by it. And that's why we trust in you. And we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and our mediator in the heavenly sanctuary right now. We can only be with you because of his mediatorial work. We just hope and pray, Heavenly Father, that always bring us into a close relationship with your Son so that we can approach you in your throne of grace. Thank you so much for giving us this message 
and for calling ourselves Seventh-day Adventists who are looking forward and us, while we wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ, we live holy and godly lives in this present world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. To close our, our worship this morning, I would like to invite everyone to sing our closing song, Church Hymn number 633, When We All Get to Heaven. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for giving us this wonderful truth that we have this assurance and the blessed hope in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, while we wait for the blessed hope and the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us then be true and faithful until the end. And may the grace of God the Father sustain you. And may the love of Jesus Christ be with you. And may the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In his wonderful name I pray. Amen.
Thank you very much, Pastor Yomar, for that uh, message full of hope titled The Promise. I would like to invite everyone to uh, watch again. We, we will keep you posted when will be our next live stream. So I would like to make a few announcements. The week of prayer, we will get a continue it. So there will be a continu continuation which happened 9 to 10 p.m. Every, every evening. That is uh, initiated by our local church. And we will, I would like also to promote the 100 days of prayer. This is uh, initiated by the World Church. Uh, you can go to the links to the um, 100 days of prayer. There's a list of prayer requests and prayer uh, items to be prayed for. And I would like to thank you for watching in your homes, whether you are in BC or in other provinces or even in other parts of the world. So in behalf of our church, we would like to thank those or frontliners, the nurses, the caregivers who are tire tirelessly working in the hospitals and also on the home care. So let's continue, continue praying for them for their safety. So this concludes our live streaming this morning. Uh, happy Sabbath to everybody and thank you.